We're still in the 100 mile wilderness and will be for a while. <laughs> so, mostly just woods, a few mountains, but the views have been so bad. It's rained almost every day and it just completely ruins your views off a mountain or really anywhere if it's thick you can't really see anything sometimes when the just a little bit of fog it makes for a cool video but when it's completely socked in then it's just pointless we haven't been recording as much I think just we're tired and kind of ready to wrap it up but our excitement for Katahdin is still there we really want to see that climb that mountain but between here and there huh, just kind of want to get there so and I felt bad about that at first but the more through hikers the northbound through hikers that I've been talking to they're feeling the same way so I guess that's just part of hiking over 2,000 miles and living out of a backpack for six, seven months. Some of them do it in four, but it's chilly this morning. 45, got down to 49, I think, and only a high of 54. And with a little bit of rain and wind, that's cold temps. Not like when we started, but few people pointed out that we seem a little down on this hike at toward the end and I think one of the things that's kind of contributing to that is lately every time we climb a mountain and we get to the top for that outstanding view that you read about this is what we get just you can't see anything past the scrub trees on the edge of the mountain but we got a plan in the 100 mile wilderness people usually can get a food drop so they don't got to carry all their food for all those days but we're going to do it a little different we're not going to get a food drop in the 100 mile wilderness we're going to get a ride out to a hostel and resupply and rest for that little bit and then head out in the morning come back where we got off and do that final push probably of about four or five days to uh, top of Katahdin and that'll be a great accomplishment and then hopefully when we do Katahdin some of the stuff will be moved out by then the storms just kind of tired of being wet and it's uh, kind of chilly too but, all right we're gonna continue on 10 minutes ago had no view whatsoever then the kind of clouds parted and we got a really great view looks like it's gonna come across and cover it again but at least it opened up briefly for us that's weird how that just all comes and blows in and covers it
I'm not sure what Maine state bird is or their state flower, but I know what their state noise is. Can you hear that? That is the rain hitting the top of the shelter. We just got here in time. So we're uh, not tenting tonight. Uh, thunder was roaring a little bit as we came up the hill and uh, thankfully the timing was perfect. Just got our stuff inside the shelter and it started raining. There wasn't any good uh, flat sites around here for a tent anyways. I'd really recommend anybody uh, hiking in uh, Maine or New Hampshire to, to hammock. Because there's just not any good flat ground without roots and rocks. Hopefully it's just a brief shower because I got to go find the uh, water source here. So I can have lasagna and Blue can have four bean vegetable soup. Four bean vegetable soup. Mm. Yum. <laughs> Not so much. Ready? Well, kind of stuck. The water source is dammed up by the beavers and feels like it's about 80 degrees with tons of bugs in it. And it's the only spot I can really get to the river at because there's a swamp around the rest of it. But we need water to cook with. So, Maine always has water dropping out of the sky. So, I got my pot out there and my cup. And I don't want to catch it off this roof. It looks pretty bad up there. But we will wait and see what this... Uh, rain does if it lets up I can go about 0.3 down the trail and there's supposed to be another river crossing that the water is accessible at I don't want this to be my lasting impression of Maine but I'll tell you the weather the hiking's one thing but the weather, you just can't beat it. <laughs> 